Hello there, it is Friday, March 22nd. The time is 11 a.m. And as you can see, we are having ourselves a bit of a snowfall today. And I think the temperature is around minus two degrees Celsius. I just came up to this area to walk Charlie the dog and you can see a video I posted of me doing just that over on the Johnny Stumbles channel. I posted that one yesterday evening. And I brought my camera with me just in case it started snowing. It said in the forecast it really wasn't going to start till later this afternoon and early into the evening. And as you can see, it is coming down pretty good. And according to my phone, it'll be like this for the next hour or so. And this here is Danforth Avenue in Greektown. And that was Woodycrest Avenue where I started recording this. And that is a look to the east. And I think what I'll do is I'll just head north up Pape. And I'll make my way up through Pape Village. I think when all is said and done, there's supposed to be something in the neighborhood of five to 15 centimeters of snow today. And I'm using my pocket three camera, which is a magnet for snowflakes. And if this keeps up later on, I'll get out and make some more content and probably do a live stream. And some of the reports said this might be the heaviest snowfall we've had this year so far. Kind of ironic since it is officially spring now. These businesses and apartments on the right have all been cleared out due to the subway expansion as con construction of the Ontario line is underway. And Pape will soon be a major transit hub. Well, maybe not soon, but eventually. And this is Pape and Danforth. And it's worth noting, I'm currently in the old city of Toronto, but after several blocks, once I get up into Pape Village, I'll be in the former borough of East York.
And here's Cape Station, which currently serves Line 2. And a number of bus routes. One bike and the bike racks there. I think a lot of people may have prematurely removed their winter tires. Got to be extra careful on the roads on a day like this. So this is the city's east end, as we are northeast of downtown. just posted a snowfall video in Midtown a few days ago and I think this snowfall has already bested that one and it's only been snowing for a little over an hour or so. Serrano Bakery and a small grocery store.
one thing I really do notice after coming back from Thailand is just how fresh the air is here. You know, my last place was right near the Gulf of Thailand. I think the air is noticeably better here. Oh, and this KFC is closed. Sorry, we're closed. Please visit the nearest location. is East York's best breakfast choice. At Goat Coffee Company. Some solid parking right there. Couldn't see where the sidewalk was. I've walked by this place a number of times. I've never been King's Drive-In. like an old school charbroiled railed burger joint. I finally got to try Johnny's about a month ago at that Shepherd and Dick Park and it certainly lived up to the hype. And of course just sent it here in Danforth there's Square Boy. This is Mortimer. Just make sure the camera is holding up. So we are well into Cape Village at this point. Zen Dental Hygiene Spa. An extra place offering waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Still seems to be a bit lighter now, looking a bit more scattered. Fifty gigs for thirty-four dollars a month. They recently offered me that for twenty-nine dollars, and I have an offer from Bell for a hundred gigs for forty. A month. Those types of deals would seem insane a few years ago, but it's good to see Canadians finally getting access to some better data plans. Something we should have had for decades. It's amazing 
but a little bit of competition does. I'd be willing to bet if Rogers was able to go ahead with their acquisition of Freedom, we wouldn't see quite the aggressive prices that we do now. And Freedom's 5G network deployment has been quite solid. The old argument that the connection is terrible no longer really makes sense, as Freedom is quite good, at least in the city. Store closing, 50% off the entire store. It's a liquidation outlet. Zoomies. Definitely have to appreciate the relatively ungentrified nature of a neighborhood like this. A lot of smaller retailers and smaller chains mixed in with just a few of the big chains. And this is Cosburn coming up. A major east-west route through this part of East York. That was a pretty serious baby stroller. Stork the Borough is kind of cut in two by the Don River. That's one of those neat electric FedEx vehicles. <laughs> that crossing guard was running after me as if to say, wait for me to cross the street. I think I can handle it. There's the McDee's. Four bucks for a McMuffin and a coffee. I've actually ordered McDonald's breakfast a few times recently. Been able to get like a McMuffin, egg McMuffin, or a sausage McMuffin, a coffee, a hash brown, and a donut delivered for about 14 bucks. It's hard to argue with that. There's a Burger King next to a Food Basics, and we walked by. The Serrano Bakery and grocery store earlier. And they also operate this cafe. It's quite popular in this part of East York.
Let's see if this secure or <laughs> security guard, crossing guard, springs to life. Thank you. How are you? What's wrong with your A camera. What's that? It's a camera. Oh, no camera. Yeah. Wow. I, I make walking videos around the city. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Very nice. Hey, yeah, you can find yourself on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good one. Very friendly crossing guard. And this is the East York Community Rec Center. Someone riding their bike. And we have made it to O'Connor Drive, which runs east-west. Well, not too far east of here, it bends north. And it finds itself up in Scarborough. I think it terminates at Eglinton Avenue East in the Golden Mile. Turning traffic must yield to pedestrians. No shit. How about all traffic must always yield to pedestrians? There's a little retail stretch here. I've decided to turn east onto O'Connor. Going to attempt to change the glove on my left hand while I record. Maybe I'll get the camera wipe just in case there's any moisture on it. There we go. Got a beefier glove on. The street here is River Court Boulevard. That postman was eyeing down the camera.
click on Mac Solutions. Well, they won't see me as a customer anytime, probably ever. like a really old house. Most of these, I'm guessing, go back to the 30s and 40s. There's another one that is probably over 100 years old. It's amazing how back then they had the sense to build with decent density in mind. Like today's sub suburbs where everything is so spread out and the houses are set back so far from the sidewalk. This is a much more sustainable and livable arrangement. Connor Drive, construction from Glenwood to Vermondsdy Road. Looks like that's going to keep up for much of the year. And the snow is definitely a lot less intense now. It still makes for a nice backdrop for a walk. This is Elmsdale Road. Seems as if these corners often feature these lovely old homes. And we're approaching Donlands Avenue, so I'm gonna make a right here and head south. I'm not sure where exactly to. This is an interesting little seldom covered on YouTube walking channels section of retail on Donlands. There's the King's Belly Pub. Got a beer store. Donlands Diner. And this is the neighborhood where Canadian icon John Candy grew up. In fact, there's an old theater I believe he used to frequent. That bell building sure kills the atmosphere along the stretch though. now high in the sky studios and I have my first make that second <laughs> it's it's the umbrella 
blowing it inside out. As the snow has just intensified, I'm walking directly into it. This is Torrens Avenue. John Candy lived on one of these streets off to the right. I once went down and took a look at where he grew up exactly. I'm going to pull into this bus stop for a second. Hopefully, I won't flag down a bus. Camera seems to be holding up. Set to. Clear out the old nostrils. Look at that, it is definitely picked up, and unfortunately, I'm now walking directly into the wind. The 56 Lee Side bus. Lee Side is a East York neighborhood north of the Don River. You love our T bone steak. I don't know if I do. That might be false advertising. Canadian breakfast special. Bacon, sausage, or pea meal with three eggs, home fried, potatoes, and toast with coffee, tea, or juice. I don't doubt that it's good, but it'd be nice if they put a price next to that. We got quite spoiled in Thailand getting meals like that for less than $5. Including one place that was excellent called the Devon Shirt. And we've made it back to Cosburn Avenue. And we could take Cosburn back over to Pape here. East York Rotary Commons. There's someone waiting for that 56 bus. Donland Station is to the south of here, just north of Danforth. I do not see her bus.
I think it's Salmon Avenue where East York officially ends and becomes the old city of Toronto. people walking around with an umbrella. Or I just might look like a weirdo in general anyways. Yep, stop signs. Who needs them when you just drive like an idiot? We'll just tiptoe around this construction coming up. There's virtually zero traffic enforcement in this city. Over the years, driving habits like that have gotten so much worse. It is so much more dangerous just to walk around than it used to be. And you'll often be met with puzzled looks and disgust and anger if you call out a driver for just blowing a stop sign or light like that. UPS man knows to stop. Oh, he also saw me. I wonder if I was here. If <laughs> he would have done that. And we are at Mortimer Avenue. Let's see if that bus ever rolls by. Mortimer will also connect us over to Pink. This walk down Don Lance isn't quite as interesting as the one up Cape was. But we still get to take in East York. Is King's Park. Ramadan. Records, collectibles, comics, toys, treehouse. Sadly, it doesn't appear to be open. Actually, it is. It's good to see. And we are at Salmon Avenue, so goodbye, East York. Hello, City of Toronto proper.
this is Aldwych Avenue. Full disclosure, this is not my umbrella. I helped myself to it, but I'll be returning it. I'm sure the owner won't mind. This is Milverton Boulevard. Oh, camera's taking a few hits. Hopefully that didn't screw it up. The corner shop. I was just thinking this week I should get out and do some e-bike and scooter videos. That's a great way to see a lot of these quieter side streets and residential streets. Is Baltic Avenue. So just up ahead is Donland Station. And welcome to the atrocity that is Toronto zoning. And our idiotic premier has just come on record speaking out against fourplexes. Four plexes don't necessarily mean four stories. We definitely have ourselves a full-blown housing crisis and could use more density, particularly around subway stations like this location with the archaic zoning bylaws. Have these areas as all low density, mostly single family homes. To live in a neighborhood like this in this day and age and think that you should be free from intensification, I think it's quite selfish. Especially given the proximity to rapid transit and the fact that so many people just don't have housing options, let alone affordable ones. Not everything needs to be a 50 or 60 story condo tower. Simply allowing fourplexes on a stretch like this would lead to a nice bump in housing options and increase in density. And you would need to break out the wrecking ball on those homes, but here we are living in this bizarro future. A 
where the feds create a population crisis and the province who's in charge of housing does nothing meaningful to address it. And it's those living in the city left dealing with the consequences. And that was Donland Station I just walked by. And we have made it back to Danforth. I was reading on Reddit, someone was saying that this mosque over here has been blaring prayers out loud, I think at 5 or 6 p.m. every night. And you can hear that for several blocks around. something they started doing with permission from the city during the pandemic. There's the only cafe. There's an excellent patio behind there as well. Late night pizza. So this is just east of Greektown. Walking west on the north side of Danforth Avenue. And speaking of charbroiled burgers, there's one of the best spots in the city, Square Boy. They are absolutely fantastic in there. They're super friendly. It is incredibly reasonable. You can get a burger fries and a drink for under seven bucks. Where else can you get that these days? And it is damn good. If you're in the area and craving a good burger, do yourself a favor and check out Square Boy. To Langford. Well, let's take this one full circle. I'll go to the shop right where I started recording. I was worried with my phone saying that the snow would only keep up for the next hour or so. It might finish up, so I grabbed the camera and went running out. Back to Woodycrest.
That's a smart thing to do in weather like this. Here we are, the Langford Parquet. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Starting from here and heading over to Pape and up through Pape Village. And then all the way up to O'Connor and over to Donlands and then down to Danforth. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below if you wish to support what I do. There's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. And there is a super thanks button up here in below if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. Stay warm, stay safe, and I will catch you on the next one. Yoink.